Hey everyone, Wanderbot here, and welcome to Skyshine's Bedlam. Or I'm just probably gonna call it Bedlam, because I have no idea who Skyshine is. No idea, I've, I've actually tried looking this one up. I, oh wait, no, it's made by Skyshine. God damn it. <laughs> Alright, new game. Alright, so what is Bedlam? It's like a post-apocalyptic wasteland RPG roguelike -y type game. I'm not entirely sure, but kind of looks like Convoy, but, you know, better. Actually, it probably had, plays nothing like Convoy. I, it's a wasteland game, I don't know. Anyway, um, what do we got? Go easy, normal, or Bedlam? I like that. Oh. Whoa. Uh, so the Bedlam mode is hardcore UI mode, no battle damage or attack info. So you have no idea how much damage anything's gonna do, that's interesting. Okay, so we can be the humans, the mutants, the marauder, actually we can't be any, any of the other ones. I guess we get to be humans. The legendary dozer, constructed by the mechanics yield. Bone Shaker was long believed lost to the hazards of Bedlam until Byzantine tycoon Rasputin Lazarus discovered the ancient wreckage and rebuilt this incredible rolling fortress. Okay, so it gets a uh, distillery, do uh, trauma cocktail. It's like a Healy thing and a blitzer screen. So this game is, uh, let's see, do dozers are designed for transit through the uh, harsh domain of Bedlam. Each has its own statistical advantages, equipment and crew, choose wisely. All right, I think there's actually an upgrade I can't get yet. So I guess we're going normal. So Bedlam is a ta tactical, I want to say roguelike, but I'm not entirely sure. It I, I really don't even know what I'm getting into here. Honestly. I'm just trying to take a look. It looks like we've got fuel. Nope. Oh wait. Uh this is power. This is crude crude oil and meat. So meat is probably just basic f food. I have no idea what I'm getting into. Um I assume we're heading for Aztec City. That's the point here. I, I truly don't know what I'm doing, but that's kind of the fun of it. So why don't we go with, why don't we go with 135.24, 35.24, 35.24, Okay, so it's the exact same thing every single time. Why don't we go, why don't we go to Chop Saw just because I like the name of Chop, Chop Saw. There we go. Oh, do these, oh, no, there isn't. Okay, oh, Byzantine, this is the uh, description for Byzantine. So, Byzantine. Civilization survived the Baron Age and flourished in this spectacular metropolis, which is now succumbing to class warfare, overcrowding, corporate conflict, and organized crime. Alright, let's just go to Chops on see, see how it goes. We're probably going to fail miserably here, but I'm okay with that. So, if you're allowed to the Blitzometer, okay, never mind. The massive dozer cautiously navigates through the congested streets of the Byzantine. While it draws some attention from the pedestrian stream, most of the civilian throng is too distracted by ubiquitous hovertisements, uh, vogue band broadcasts, and quantum cranial devices. So it's like future tech stuff. Okay, I like that. As the dozer nears the perimeter portal, all but the most curious residents begin to withdraw, apprehensive about any proximity to the harsh domain outside the city's border boundaries. With a resounding clamor, the reinforced gates slowly part, and the great machine forges ahead into the unpredictable land of Bedlam. Okay, so we're going into Chop, chop Saw. So, Chop Saw is marauders are the dregs of humanity prowling the lawless lands of Bedlam. Scavengers and thieves preying on anyone they encounter. Alright, well, I don't have much of a choice here. Let's say no. Yep, it's the only option, so why even ask? Okay, so it says 305 and 72. Okay, we're going to lose a lot of resources getting over here. So that must be some kind of like meter based on like people's awareness of my activities. Shortly after leaving by, uh, Byzantine, Byzantine, the dozer approaches a large obstruction of scrap metal in the road. The crew disembarks to inspect the debris, only to be suddenly surrounded by one of the king of King Viserra's murderous marauder patrols. A mazo rig you got there. King Viserra's gonna want that. We're gonna burn you scuzzers and take it for him. All right, so okay, drag and drop your crew into your away team. So I've got. Can I like, can I like drag them back? Okay, I can drag them back. Oh, crew required a, for battle. Okay, so I can I get all of these people. I think 
Kills for, for veteran, for veteran. So you gotta kill three things and they become a veteran. They only have three health and they've got limits. I want they can do it. Oh, I see. The frontliners have more health. Gunslingers and trenchers. Uh, trenchers look like they have shotguns and stuff. I'm digging the character art. It's very comic booky. Gritty. I like it. Ah, uh, let's see. This guy's face. Looks like he's seen some shit. That guy just looks like a lumpy Vin Diesel. Uh, you know what? Let's let's take let's take lumpy Vin Vin Diesel. Trying to give me the smolder, I guess. That guy just doesn't want to be there. I like it how most of the frontliners are just like, yeah. She looks she looks like she looks like yeah. Uh, she looks like she belongs. There we go. Okay, gunslingers. So it looks like every single person I put down here costs me resources. So if I put down. Let's see, which one of these guys are cool? I like it how every single person has... Oh, I like him. Hunter. Good face, man. That is his battle face. Oh, I can even I can even rename these people. Well, you know what? I'm not going to do it this time around, but this game seems to... Uh, seems to encourage multiple playthroughs. So chances are what I'm going to do is... Uh, next time... Next time I do like a run-through of this, when live or whatever... I will accept people's names from the audience and see how you guys do. For now, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna slow things down and take a look at it. And last one is gonna be Crawford because I mean, look at him. You can see it from the thumbnail. Here's the question. Uh, you know what? Let's let's take this guy. And let's take Durgo. I'm gonna be wasting some resources to get all these extra people. Oh, but I'd rather go into my first battle uh, with overwhelming power. So, pistol-packing gunslingers have great balance of endurance, movement, and weapon damage. These hand cannon hotshots can also return fire automatically when attacked. They also have their own... Oh, I see. These are nicknames for these guys. So, Chris Dog Churn. His name is Chris... Oh, that's just their that's just their nicknames. Okay, that's kind of boring. I kind of wish they had automatic nicknames to begin with. So, that's gunslingers. Uh, Dead Eyes are long-distance rifle experts with the lowest health and movement to the crew. But they also deal the greatest damage at the furthest, furthest distance. Protect these critical... Just cuts off. Okay. And... Trencher. As close combat weapon specialists of the crew, the shotgun-wielding trenchers deliver whopping firepower when the enemy is near, but they're much, much less effective at a distance. And lastly, frontliners. Sturdy and agile fighters are able to dash directly into hand-to-hand -in -hand combat and inflict punishment, as well as absorb it. They can also be used to shield other group. Okay, so we're just we're just gonna go. I want to see how this this works, and we're fighting against marauders. I, I'm digging this game. The style is. I'm gonna say the style is pretty overwhelming, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know. They the the art team definitely outdid themselves with this. I have yet to see anything like really impressive as far as animation goes but like from the 2d side of things it looks really nice oh interesting so i don't actually have like custom character designs for each of these guys they're effectively just a bunch of nameless super almost super soldier looking people so it looks like this game also plays very similarly to xcom can we shoot there oh wait can we just shoot her no okay so we can move him there and then then shoot there we go. How much HP does that person have? Not much left. Okay, so what do we got? So it alternates rounds. Does it matter whose turn it is? Do I... Like... No, it doesn't seem to matter whose turn it is at all. That's interesting. So... I get one turn, they get one turn. I can use whomever I want, they can use whomever I want want. Oh, maybe not. Maybe that's not how this works. Okay. Oh, shoot. I gotta move from that one. Okay. Can you... Can't move very far. Might be able to take a shot. No, nope, can't take a shot. Alright. So don't... I don't know how AP works. Or is it 1-2? Oh, enemy turn. 1-2. So the enemy just gets 2 AP every single time. Alright. So he can fire twice. Fascinating. That's a weird setup. See, I was expecting the XCOM style where each character gets 2 AP and it would cycle down the list based on a, based off of an initiative order. 
But no, this actually makes me bringing all of these people kind of meaningless. Okay. Except for, you know, general successes, but I have no idea. We've got a bunch of, like, little exclamation marks all over the place. We can also... Let's see where that is. Nope. Say cancel. Where do the exclamation marks go to? I don't know. It looks like it costs me the same thing no matter where I go. Except for there, but that's probably to, the, to strand. That's what they're implying. So points of interest. So we've got limited resources, but not that limited. Let's go to this one. And then continue on. I, I'm probably going to lose this run horribly. Oh. The sound of booming gunfire draws the attention of the crew. Following the noise to a nearby hill, they discover a shotgun-wielding marauder standing among the bloodied corpses of several other marauders. There appears to be, uh, have been a disagreement of sorts. Approach the marauder. Oi, pardon the squabble. These dreggers had a difference of opinion with the Boski dude miss. Dude, dude miss. With Boski dude miss. Ask about the dispute. No imagination. All stabbing this, shooting that, setting those things on fire. I splintered from the clutch to pursue more artful bloodshed. They didn't brain my way and came to murderize me. Boski Dudemus just wants to be creative with carnage. Let's invite him to the car dozer. Brills! A chance to paint Bedlam with glorious gore. Beautiful butchery. Stunning splatter. Boski Dudemus has joined the do dozer crew. Alright, so that did cost me, um... That did cost me resources to get there, but at the same time, bonus. Obviously, we're going to run out of fuel pretty fast if I keep doing this, so we're, we're going to move on. Jeez. 210 fuel and a lot of food to do so. Okay, so this is this the Blitzometer. That's probably uh, kind of an ind indicator of how much difficulty you're going to be running into. Okay, you've been receiving reports of unrest among the passenger population, likely from being constrained inside the dozer for so long. The prolonged confinement has led to incidents of violence. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, stop and let the passengers take a breather outside. The dozer scanners do not detect immediate hazards to the vicinity, so you open the bay doors and inform the passengers that they may have a brief respite outside. So I guess we're moving population people out of Byzantine to somewhere else. But mere moments after they disembark, an enzyme Cyclone whips into the area without warning. The terrified passengers rapidly return to the dozer, but a number of them are caught in the twister and are instantly atomized. The dozer continues along the road. Oh, we lose some passengers. Where's my... Oh, that's my passenger list. Okay, I wonder if that saves me on food. Ooh, I see a question mark to that, but we don't have the... We don't have the resources. We're running out of... We're running out of crude fuel right off the bat. So yeah, this must be the, um, oh, I can zoom out, I can zoom in, but it doesn't seem particularly necessary one way or another. I mean, we could try some of these points of interest, see if I can get some, f uh, fuel. I'll try. I mean, worst comes to worst, we run out. I've already, I've already got my impre impressions of this game. Like, we lose, it doesn't matter. As the crew explores the area, they discover a rusted, discover E rusted, a rusted metal doorway built into the side of the cliff wall. Above the doorway is a large metal cog engraved with various symbols. Try to open up the door. The crew uses their fusion torches to cut through the latch on the door. Pushing it aside, they find what looks like an elevator. The controls no longer appear functional, but there is a shaft extending from the fall, far wall, uh, or rear wall of the cage. Attempt to repair the controls. The crew attempts to patch the ancient circuitry, but is unable to do so. They go back. Can't get into the shaft. Dang. Well, let's try this one. The search, uh, like, I'm trying to experience as much of this game as possible before we end up dunked. So, while exploring what was once a populated area, the crew's attention is drawn by the sound of rambunctious behavior. Quietly moving through the rubble, the crew comes upon an encampment of marauders engaged in what seems to be their typical malicious activities. Attack the marauders. Look, it just flooded into the neighborhood. Fresh chopping dolls for the clutch. All right, so this game, ooh. Heals, Durgo heals in a couple of days. Alright, so first and foremost, we're gonna bring these guys back. Didn't realize that, uh, damage was important. Okay, so first and foremost, Boski, he's a trencher. Trenchers ain't bad, but I like gunslingers more than anything else. I think I'm gonna bring these three, Crawfer, Artema, and Jazerium. I think those are a pretty good set. Everybody else? Meh. Because <sighs> last time, I had way too many people, and I just definitely was not going to be using them. I think this seems a little bit more reasonable. So, overall, base impressions, I mean, the music, it's wastelandy. It's 
it's exactly what you'd expect. Ooh, I like this environment art. I, I like it a lot. Actually, it looks like they've got three people. Can I hit that one? The answer is no. Can I hit that one? The answer is no. What is this? Oh, that's like power and stuff. What can he hit? Okay, so if we move here, we can shoot her. However, what if I just move back? Let them come closer. Oh shoot, does he have a, he has a limited range. So that's something to keep in mind. The sniper rifles can't, the sniper rifle, uh, the snipers only have, only can shoot specific people. Oh, that's, that's rough. Wait, there we go. Okay, cool. Because he's only got three HP left. That's good to know. She's got four. I'm gonna back her off. So let's see. Who can you... Can you shoot? You can shoot. Okay. Unfortunately, your durability is bad, but that's not a problem for me. You're... You're... You've got a shotgun. That that one's only got three HP. Okay, I think we're good. So this... I'm, I'm noticing this game is particularly fair. So we get... Oh, we get... Oh, I see. So, you know how we, it said like two times X resources and then three times X resources? So the um, the less people you bring, the more resources you, I think you get. Oh, that's interesting. I will keep that in mind. Okay, so that kind of pays for itself. So I'm going to start doing these, uh, these points of interest to go looking for resources. I, I can't think of any better way to do this. So we're exploring the area. The crew sensors detect some kind of advanced frequency, which seems like an anomaly in the wasteland. Following the signal, the crew discovers an encampment. Judging by the equipment and the logos of the Unita Biotech Unita Cute Biotech Innovations, they must be corporate scientists from the Byzantine doing research in Bedlam. Uh, approach the scientists. One of the scientists steps away from his equipment and approaches the crew. Ah, greets to you, brave travelers. We've heard of your expedition just before we departed the city ourselves, seeking undiscovered elements and evolutionary miracles. Thus far, the only item of interest we have encountered is the shell of a Vorax spinner, a or spiner, a lethal creature that we believe actually went extinct even before the Baron Age. Ultimately, we may not ultimately may not be of value for the research required. The last one of our vehicles is in a state is in a state of disrepair, so we have been researching here for some time, but we shall endeavor to locate initial valuable assets for the glory of the corporation. I'll invite them to the dozer. If you do not mind storing our equipment and research specimens on board, we are certainly amenable. Think of the uncharted territories we would be able to reach on your expedition. Outstanding! And we've added the cargo and we gained some more people. Cool! I don't know if that was worth it or not. Pay it possibly better than attacking them. Okay, let's, let's progress on. Unfortunately, we're running into the red on crude. That's not good. Bedlam is notorious for its unpredictable climate. You're entering a peculiar mist of corrosive enzymes. This haze is unlikely to cause damage to the dozer, but it is possible that your passengers and crew may be harmed if exposed to these mysterious caustic elements. Okay, well, we're going here. Let's hope, hope we can get some stuff. Unfortunately, I think this is the difficulty meter and it's becoming a problem. Well, traveling along the road, dozer scanners detect impact tremors. Somebody is deploying munitions in the area. But it doesn't seem to be aimed in your direction. Stop and investigate. You just mark and follow the sounds of destruction. Soon after, you discover a pair of heavily armed cyborgs blasting away at a group of troglopods. Large, pustule bedlam vermin that are skittering around the nearby rock formation. A caravan of nomads has stopped to observe the ex explosive festivities. Approach the cyborgs. As you approach, the cyborgs momentarily cease their display of weaponry. Ah, more come to witness the might of Big Nasty Dynasty. Of the Big Nasty Dynasty. I like these guys. I ask about the activity. You don't recognize us. We're the Crunch Brothers. I am Rustle, and this is my brother Braindom. We are Byzantine's leading source of personnel fusion augmentations, something of celebrities as well. I don't mind saying. Braindom here is a field testing our new active aggressor product line. Be better splatty targets here outside the city. Impressive enough to attract a crowd, see? 
The cybernetically enhanced brother, called Braindom, launches another volley from his vo wire gun rig in the direction of the troglopods, with a messy display that elicits gasps of awe from the gathered bedlam denizens. Satisfying results. Interesting in a, pr interesting in a purchase? Uh, let's see. Inquire about the dozer weapons? Dozer, huh? Beastly vehicle seems extraordinary. But there's nothing in our arsenal at that scale. Our expertise is really neurotech body ar armaments, legal or otherwise. Preferably otherwise. Invite them to the dozer. Ah, I've been curious about that dozer ever since the announcement for the Lazarus from Lazarus back in the city. Seems like quite a machine. We could expand our evaluations even deeper into Bedlam. What say, Braindom? Sounds good. Man, a few words, but huge capacity for inflicting violence. Looks like we're on board. Alright, they've joined the uh, crew. What about the nomads? Ha! Indeed, riding a great war machine rather than footing the hellified lands? The pleasure would be ours indeed. Alright, so we gain people. Lots of people. I don't know if this costs more food as we go along the way, so we want to get to bath if I can. Wait, I don't know what this is, but we're going for it. Looks fancy. Unfortunately, we're almost out of crude. As the dozer travels along the road, you notice a man with peculiar, peculiar equipment go dashing across your path ahead. You recognize the man as an alchemist, one of the practitioners of transmogrification, able to convert various substances to other useful materials using black science. The man is being pursued by several cyborgs. The dozer comes to a halt, and the crew disembarks to investigate. Oi! You fleshers are getting in the way of us grabbing that Roma's gear! You're gonna get regret stepping in the big chaos! Alright, uh, so let me, let me take this out for a second. So yeah, if I've got these, if I've got a couple of people, we might be okay. So first and foremost, do I, I've got Braindom. Really, these guys count as snipers. Oh, they looked way cooler before they got the, the clothing on. That's a shame. Well, I like trenchers. And I like, I like gunslingers. So let's bring on Boski as well. That should be th three people. We should be good. Okay. And go. Huh. <sighs> I'm I'm loving this game thus far. I mean, it's got it's it's simpler than XCOM. It's 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 like a cross between XCOM and uh FTL. And sort of Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a cross between XCOM and FTL. Or I'm trying to think of like other good tactical games like oh shoot, I don't think we brought enough people. Maybe we did, maybe we didn't. Begs questions. Begs many questions. Unfortunately, I don't know if we're in a good position here. You know what? I'm going to move back. We, we, all of these guys have guns. That'll do four damage to him. That'll do four damage to him. That's a little bit. That's a little bit better odds for me. Okay. You want to shoot twice. Well, she's dead. All right, that's not good for me. Uh, this will do one. Unfor unfortunately, moving. Never mind. That did a heck of a lot more damage. Moving to engage the enemy does not seem to work out in my. Does not seem to work out in my favor. Can I not? Okay. I move here, then I shoot. Oh, sh that knocked him back. Perfect. Okay, let's try. That one's Dunsky. Okay, and then we're gonna run back. Hopefully, hopefully they'll come after me. Yep. Okay, let's blasto change of this guy. This gunslinger has me concerned. Gunslinger's dead. Okay, unfortunately, Boski I think is quite dead. Yeah, the problem is you move you move closer. Here's the question: Do you lose them though? That is the question I have. I'm gonna back up a bit. This is not going great for me. Okay, that's perfect. Don't move. Oh crap. Unfortunately, he's probably going to get hit. Enemy Blitz. Uh-oh. I don't know what Enemy Blitz is. 
I guess they get extra options, actions. I don't know. You cranked my meaners to the red and got smithereened. Okay, well, they died. I, I think they're, like, actually dead. A devastating failure. A number of passengers were so distraught by the report, they immediately abandoned the dozer. This guy looks way too happy for what just happened there. Okay, so we've barely got anything left. And we're probably going to get something good for that one. All right, we're out of resources. Shit out of luck. Let's see. Your fuel, fuel supply is def depleted. The dozer engines shudder, and the vehicle rumbles to a halt. A motionless armored hulk. And the desolate and deadly land of Bedlam. This is a nightmare scenario. As you begin to consider your very limited options, the passengers start to panic. Soon enough, the dozer scanner detects several vehicles approaching. One of King Viserys' outrider patrols. The quick crew quickly deploys from the dozer to confront the threat. Nice to see you sit here and wait for us. King Viserys will be pleased to see your severed skulls. All right. So last time, oh yeah, they're they're like actually dead. All right. So first and foremost, snipers actually seem pretty freaking valuable. I'll bring them with. I, I I know I get more resources for bringing less people. It... We're not... We're not... I'm sparing no expense on this one. Shotgun people are kind of okay. Unfortunately... We'll just bring Chris Dog. <sighs> Unfortunately for me, this is probably going to end poorly. Watch, watch it only be like two dudes and a waste of my time. I don't even know. But at the same time... One way or another, I think this battle is going to be kind of the end of this episode and the end of this run for me. Because at this point, I've made up, I've very solidly made up my mind on this game. Let's see, good luck hitting these guys. Nope. You're not going to be able to. Can you? Can you? The answer is no. So why don't, why don't we unify the front a little? Let them come to me, because that seems like such a critical strategy. It bothers me that, that the snipers can't shoot anything closer. Hey, he's a veteran. Cool. That means he has more HP and does more damage. Ooh, I like that. Okay, so why don't we... I'm going to go for kind of a defensive formation here. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Move... Shoot. There we go. Unfortunately, he's getting a little bit close, so if he decides to get closer, he's going to get the shot in. No, he's not. Interesting. Can't get the shot. They're within, they're within my protected boundaries. That's a bit... garbage. If I move there, I can get a shot in. Take him out. Problem solved. Can we... Can we hit? Alright. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty beast. Not gonna lie. Alright, uh, let's, let's move you over here. Getting closer now. That's, that's one of my snipers, right? No, it's not. I should probably use one of my actual snipers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run him. Actually, can I? Can I move and shoot anywhere? Unfortunately, his positioning is perfect, so I can't snipe him no matter what. We can move and snipe that guy and just hope for the best. Yeah, let's do it. With luck. He'll just make the dumb decision. He made the dumb decision. I don't know what his decision... Yeah, so everybody has very specific ranges. That's weird. It makes sense within the movement sense of this game. God damn it. But at the same time, it's so so rough to work with. Enemy blitz. So do I get a blitz? I don't think I get a blitz. And that's frustrating. Triumph! Ugh. Oh yeah, so I don't even get the times two. We lose that. Wow, this game is not easy. You, you know what? I think going through this game a second time around, I'll, I at least we get some resources for it. But I, I think the second time... I go through this game. Also, we're not going to take the long way around. I just realized the shortest route would have been this direction. Probably would have been worth heading for Bath. Probably should have also been able to check the map, but whatever. Uh, either way, though, I'm really digging this game. It is hard. Like, this is this is going to appeal to anybody that liked, you know, XCOM, that liked Halfway, that liked really any kind of tactical, uh, you know, turn-based 
tactical RPG, tactical strategy game. I don't even know what you want to call it. But it's it's got a lot of depth from what I can see. I mean, the combat's a little bit simple, but at the same time, there's kind of beauty in the simplicity. It kind of frustrates me a little bit because I'm going to get my ass kicked uh, seven ways to Tuesday. But, I mean, that's just kind of the way things go, and I'm sure people will tell me how to play this game a heck of a lot better, both uh, live and in the comments later. But overall, I'm quite impressed, and uh, I'm definitely going to turn this into a long, long-term series, because this is, this is a good game. It, it's gorgeous, the music is on point, if... I mean, personally, I wouldn't buy the soundtrack for this game, but that's because it's mostly just atmospheric, like... I, let's be honest, it sounds like uh, Borderlands during its slow moments, where you're just kind of running around out in the wasteland. Uh, but, you know, the art the art truly is the high point of this game, above all else. And I think that's why I'm so wowed about this, because I really love uh, well, you know, well-developed games as far as art goes. So there's that. So I truly would recommend picking this game up. It's 20 bucks. Uh, I think it's like $3 off, like 17 ish uh, on, on release. I'm not sure if that's the greatest point, price point, kind of take it or leave it depending on what kind of games you like. So, like, if you liked FDL, if you like uh, if you like XCOM, that sort of thing, that's probably worth it. Otherwise, it's probably going to go on sale at some point. But overall, it's generally one of the better... Uh, oh, I just noticed something hilarious. It's generally one of the, the better indie games I've seen at this price point. So, I would say it's worth it. It, it seems like a, a uh, pretty good game to get into. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. And that means I'm going to be continuing with the game, but before we get into the outro, I just wanted to point out that a lot of these topographical maps are faces. Let's let's zoom in on this one. Eye, eye, nose, mouth, eye, eye, nose, mouth, chin, chin, mouth, eye, eye, uh, sort of eye, nose, I don't know if that's gonna last. I know it's supposed to be like your imagination, oh yeah, eye, eye, nose, mouth, chin. Uh, these are skulls here. You can see the skull nose there. These people are, like, mutated together. I think this is supposed to be, like, a smiley clown, but I'm having hard, hard time telling. But yeah, the, the, the stuff they snuck into the to topo topography here is awesome. I, I really, I, I'm really enjoying this game. I, th I think it's a lot of fun. I'm curious if there are other campaigns, if things get switched around or not. I have yet to see that, and I guess we'll see that on the next episode. What does this do? Oh, bio-research. There's research?! Whoa. That's cool. So you can send, spend power cells on these things. So can I just... Can I just... Holy crap, you know how much this would have saved my butt? Can we keep going on that one? No. Okay, so you can, you can wildly reduce your engine costs. It costs you, uh, batteries, but, like, whatever, who cares? Whoa, that's a whole extra thing that they didn't even point out for me. Honestly, I would say this game kind of needs a tutorial just to get people acquainted with the game, but I guess the first playthrough, I've already figured it out. Parts of it out, anyway. So, I, I am thoroughly impressed, and truly would recommend that picking this one up, it is totally worth it. So, if you guys like this impressions video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like, helps more than you know. Uh, if you want to see more Bedlam, by the way, or other indie games, then hit subscribe, because I, I do a lot of these games. I love doing them, too. Especially especially when I run across gems like this one. And you know what that means. Uh, I guess if you want to see more Bedlam, like I said, hit subscribe, because, boy, I'm going to be doing this one for a while. So, I'll see you guys in the next episode. You know I said this game needs tutorials? It's got five of them. I'm going to play them before I play this game again, I think. Because I think that would actually be a smart idea. Also, you can resume your runs, which is good. That means, like, you can save mid-run. That is, that is so nice as well. Okay, like I was saying.